Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Jake Ludington here, and I want to give you my initial thoughts on the first 48 hours I've spent with the T-Mobile MyTouch 4G. Now, this is the upgrade to their MyTouch line that is obviously operating on their 4G network, and let me tell you, it is far faster. I had the Nexus One for uh, about the last year, got it in January when it came out in 2010. Before that, I had the uh, G1, and so I've had a lot of time with Android devices on the T-Mobile network. I, I stick with T-Mobile because it gets reception at my house. Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint do not. Um, in terms of my impressions about the 4G speeds, I also have a Sprint Overdrive. So I'm very familiar with kind of the early stages of 4G. And this device, in test after test, using speedtest.net from my laptop, uh, because I thought that was the fairest test for the Overdrive, this device was twice as fast everywhere I tested it throughout the greater Seattle area, uh, w without question. So the 4G on T-Mobile, at least in the Seattle area, faster than Sprint. Beyond that, there are several other things that I like about this. The 720p camera, uh, being able to shoot 720p video with this phone is among the best that I've seen. I'm not ready to say that it is better than the iPhone, but it is pretty darn close to being on par with video shot by the iPhone. Now, having said that, uh, this has a front-facing camera. Love that it has a front-facing camera. The front-facing camera is, resolution-wise, a piece of crap. It looks awful. Compare the video shot by the front-facing camera and the video shot by the rear-facing camera, and it's night and day different. The other thing I don't like about the front-facing camera on this is that the perspective that it gives you is a mirror perspective. And well, you might want that, you might not. For example, I was shooting video sitting with my daughter in our living room, and as I was watching the video back, I noticed that um, we have stairs that if you are facing the stairs coming up out of the living room, there's a bookcase on the right, and there is a, uh, our television is on the left of the stairs. Now, in the video shot with this, with the front facing camera, it is reversed. Television on the right, bookcase on the left. That's a little weird for me. The MyTouch comes with Froyo pre-installed um, as any device should really. I would have liked to have had gingerbread, but I'll take what I can get. It's got a one gigahertz Snapdragon processor. One of the things that I found somewhat annoying about the software implementation is things were already out of date. Basically every Google app that ships with this phone needed an update. For instance, Gmail, which on my Nexus One is uh, able to do things like replying in line. Out of the box, this was not. I had to get an update for Gmail in order to be able to reply in line in Gmail on this phone. Having said that, I love having Google Apps integrated fully on my Android device. And honestly, for me, that is more important than a number of the things about like apps and that that you get with, say, an iPhone. Uh, having said that, there is something that I like better about the iPhone experience than I like about the current Android experience. And that is that when you buy a bunch of apps with iTunes, if you were smart enough to at least store them in your iTunes, if you get a new iPhone, you can automatically sync them all up with that iPhone. Android, not so much. You basically have to go figure out what apps you were missing, what apps you wish you had, and track them all down and re-download them again. That is really frustrating hate that about Android in general. Um, that's, not a, that's not something specific to the MyTouch, that's just a Android universe problem, something that needs to get solved. Um, some more specifics about the MyTouch, they have some features where you can uh, kind of pick and choose favorite people in your life to keep track of that you can then pull up and see things about them like the most recent text messages that you got from them, the most recent calls. Uh, you can even integrate some things like Facebook and Twitter in that. And while it's, it's useful, it's kind of gee whiz cool, I don't see myself using that long term, but at the same time, uh, it's kind of a nice to have feature on the device. The software includes kind of a neat feature where for me, I have kids and that, that are very young, like I have a two year old daughter who likes to watch videos on my phone, but I may not want her sending say text messages or dialing the phone accidentally. And there's a kids mode on the phone that basically you could set that mode and your little kids can interact with the things you want them to on the phone but they're not gonna accidentally uh, call phone numbers and things like that. 
So that's another nice thing that I really like about the MyTouch experience. Another thing T-Mobile's done fairly well with their MyTouch line of products is they've created a accessory ecosystem, which is not on par with the iPhone, but at least they're thinking in that direction. So for instance, I just put on the uh, power skin uh, battery charger, which I mean, it makes the phone gigantic and it's got this ugly little bump right here. But at the same time, it's nice that I know that I have a battery backup that actually fits on the phone. So I'm not having to just randomly plug in some USB battery to charge it back up. Inside the phone, it's got four gigs of internal uh, storage and another eight gigs from a card. And obviously you could expand it with an additional card. That's a nice feature. I mean, starting with 12 gigs is kind of nice. I put enough music on, on my phone that I can listen to music without uh, having to have like my entire library and 12 gigs is probably good enough for me for a while. We'll see. Uh, I didn't have the greatest camera on the Nexus one, so I didn't really shoot a lot of video with it. I may shoot more video with this phone, so it may be that I will actually need more storage. T-Mobile's done some things to go beyond the base level Android experience that I, I kind of love and hate about the MyTouch. For instance, they installed Swipe on here for all of the keyboard operations, which is great for being able to kind of slide your thumb across the keyboard and spell out words. I like that for, let's say I'm walking or I'm sitting down and I, I wanna quickly spell things out. I can do that about as fast as I could if I decide to use two thumbs and type. But the thing I don't like is that Swipe hides the microphone function for doing voice activation for many of the keyboards. And for me, that doesn't work because let's say I want to send a text message and maybe this is on purpose, but let's say I want to send a text message saying I'm running 15 minutes late and I happen to be at a stoplight in my car. With my Nexus One, all I would do is hit that uh, microphone button, say what I wanted to say and have a fairly strong confidence that it would be accurate and I could send it off and the message would be good and I'm not really putting myself at risk because I'm not trying to type and drive. Now with this, uh, it could be that because I've gotten used to doing the microphone method of communication that I'm going to risk typing and driving now. And so maybe this is a little unsafe. At the same time, maybe I just won't text while I'm driving anymore. Probably the smarter choice. Anyway, there you have it. I really like the MyTouch 4G experience so far. Uh, if I had to pick one favorite feature again, I would go back to the speed of downloading, speed of loading web pages, speed of getting apps. I, by far a far faster experience than either using my Sprint Overdrive or my Nexus One that I had for the last year. So, so far this is a winner. Uh, we'll see what I think, but uh, first 48 hours, I like it so far. And if you're a T-Mobile user and looking for an upgrade, I would highly recommend this phone.